Welcome to Bethany Lutheran Church and our Monday Thursday service. You'll note tonight this service, much like our Palm Sunday service, will not have an ending. It will continue tomorrow night with our Good Friday service and tomorrow afternoon at noon. And then as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus on Saturday at 5 p.m., Sunday at 8, 9.30, and 11, then our service will conclude. My name is Deborah Alba. I serve as deacon here on the pastoral staff alongside Pastor Gary Sandberg, Pastor Nate Preisinger, and Janet Mortensen, our director of pastoral care. We are here for you with any spiritual needs, concerns that you may have. I invite you now to take a few deep breaths, to settle down from the traffic and the noise outside, Give yourselves about 15 seconds as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship this evening. You're invited to stand as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We now join together in the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now join in our gathering hymn, and you're invited to face the cross as it enters the sanctuary.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on this night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the anthem. Our first reading is from 1 Corinthians 11, beginning at verse 23. Our preface tells us that in the bread and cup of the Lord's Supper, we experience intimate fellowship with Christ and with one another because it involves his body given for us and the new covenant in his blood. Faithful participation in this meal is a living proclamation of Christ's death until he comes in the future. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. Paul continues, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Here ends the reading. Thanks, Gretchen. I love the way you made that transition. Thank you. I invite you to rise as is comfortable for you for the reading of the gospel. From the 13th chapter of John we read, Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment. That you love one another just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So here we are in the middle. We're in the middle of this time of Holy Week. We're in the middle of what it means to be disciples. We're in the middle of Palm Sunday where Jesus was acclaimed as a king and the crowds thronged to him. And we're in the middle of Palm Sunday and Good Friday where once again the crowds will throng but now to the chief priests as they hear cries against Jesus. And we know all of that is happening, and we're here in the middle. And so on this night, we we get a sense of what it is that Jesus wants us to know in the middle, right in the midst of all of this, in the midst of this incredible, wonderful, incredible, terrible week, Jesus meets us right in the middle. 
And actually, right now, I'm standing right in the middle of what we hear happening at that Passover night. Paul recounts for us as he writes to the church in Corinth and gives them a sense of what it is they are to continue to do. Just the way Paul writes that would lend us to believe that maybe this is already part of a worship ritual that people are engaged in. Whether that happens in a a temple, in a formal place, or whether it happens in a home, or even over the meals that people share, that there's something about the ritual, about the worshipfulness of taking bread and wine and sharing it. And sharing the very words that Jesus shared with his disciples. And we'll do that again tonight. But this feels a little different than the next thing we'll come to. Because when we're gathered here at the table, it doesn't feel as if this is just symbolic somehow of what happened on that night but we're actually invited into the upper room we're actually invited to participate as the very disciples of Jesus Christ in the same way that he shared with his disciples we're invited to be at the table we're invited to be the disciples we're invited to receive Jesus just as he is and bread and wine and body and blood, the very presence of Christ here for us now, in the middle of it all. And in John's gospel, he captures for us the other event of that night, when Jesus talks with his disciples and then takes a break, wraps a towel around his waist and begins to wash their feet. And so that'll also be a part of our night. If you would like to have your feet washed as a part of our Monday Thursday celebration, you are welcome to. And Pastor Nate and Deacon Deborah and I will be up here and you'll have a chance to experience that, getting your feet washed and washing another person's feet if you want. But to be honest, this does feel more symbolic. It really doesn't feel like the real thing. Unless, if some of you have been walking all day, and uh, you've only been wearing sandals, and your feet are quite dirty, then you are most invited to come to Pastor Nate's station for the foot washing tonight. But most often, we know that when you're going to come to foot washing, at least this is what it was like when I was in the seminary, where it was a big deal that the president of the seminary and the dean would wash people's feet. And it would be that the new students would not know this is the tradition that happens at the seminary. And so they would be in class and it would be 9 o'clock and they knew chapel started at 10 and class was supposed to end at 9.50. And they would ask the professor, can we end a little early? Because I got to get back to my room and wash my feet before I come to worship for the foot washing. Because we know that largely, this is just symbolic. I have to admit, I don't remember other places in the New Testament that we hear that Jesus' disciples went and washed other people's feet. They did so much more. They they met people where they were. They healed people. They preached. They did all kinds of acts of service. But they were rather high acts of service the washing of the feet was a very low act of service both physically emotionally and spiritually to be the one washing feet well that was for the brand new servant not one who had worked their way up the ranks and out of such a dirty enterprise so tonight you're invited into two worlds You're invited to experience the very real table, the very real presence of Jesus Christ. You're invited to understand sacrifice at its ultimate level. This is my body. This is my blood. Hearing those very words from Jesus. And you're invited into a very symbolic act of having your feet washed And to knowing what it feels like to be humble enough 
to let somebody wash your feet and hopefully to see leaders in the church knowing that a humbleness in washing someone's feet has value in our world today. To be honest, if between now and next Monday Thursday, unless you have children or grandchildren, you may not wash anybody else's feet and you might not have anybody wash yours. But in between, there will be so many opportunities for you to serve each other. For you to be a part of somebody's life in a special, intimate way. And so, here we are tonight, in between. In between the glory of Palm Sunday and the destruction of Good Friday. And Jesus meets us right here. With sacrifice and with symbol. Some of you I know, in your lives, you're way into sacrifice. You know what that means for your life. For some, you're probably just starting to understand it. And for some of you, you might say, I just need a, I need, I need a symbol. Just something to get me started. And whether you have your feet washed or not, maybe just witness somebody else, at least. For that's where Jesus would meet us. Wherever we are. Are you a person of great sacrifice? Jesus will meet you there. Are you a person just learning what it means to serve one another? Jesus will meet you there. Because wherever we are, we're in the middle. We're in the middle of life. We're in the middle of Holy Week. And Jesus meets us wherever we are. Amen. Our hymn of the day is printed on page four. Will you let me be your servant? I invite you to stand as we sing. God's grace continues to meet us and to break into our lives through the confession and forgiveness that we shared in earlier and soon here at Christ's table. By God's grace, we are reconciled back to God and forgiven. Before we gather, though, for this celebration of a meal, 
we take time to reconcile our earthly relationships with one another through the sharing of God's peace. And so I say to you, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another. You may remain standing. (laughs) Sure. In the gathering of community, in the sharing of God's peace, in bread and wine, and in so many other ways, Jesus continues to meet us and to break into our life. As we gather now for this sacred Christian practice of Holy Communion, please note that this invitation to celebrate communion tonight is for everyone who's gathered here. All gathered in the sanctuary, those joining in on the live stream, this is a gift for you. This is a way where Jesus is breaking into your life. We believe that the invitation to communion comes not from Bethany Lutheran Church, but is an invitation from Jesus Christ himself. And so if you will be spiritually nourished by this meal, please come and be fed at Christ's table tonight. Our communion liturgy appears in your bulletin starting at the bottom of page four. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It was on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you. It is shed for all people, for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we remember then Christ's death and resurrection, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Instructions about communion distribution this evening appear in your bulletin at the top of page 5. Please familiarize yourself with that paragraph. And then note that there are silver trays in the front of the seating sections. These silver trays contain prepackaged communion kits. Um, Some of them are marked gluten-free, if that meets your dietary restrictions. All of them are alcohol-free, if that's uh, part of your dietary restrictions. Either way, still come forward with a prepackaged kit or with empty hands to receive the body and blood from a communion server this night. And now, friends, hear this invitation to the table. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We enter now into a time of guided prayer. You can remain seated, and I will simply give four prompts over some time of silence and meditation. Feel free to use that as a prompt for your prayer, and feel free to ignore those prompts and let your own prayers come forth as you will. So if it's helpful and meaningful for you, we invite you to respond to those you know, petitions in your heart and if you have other things that are more important, please do that. I invite you now into this time of guided prayer. Open our hearts and minds to your will, O God. We ask, O God, that you bring your peace to Dear God, help me show love to Dear God, hold close in your heart
God of presence, be near me when Collect these prayers of our hearts, O God, and hold them close to your heart. Amen. This is now an opportunity for you to spend some time in meditation to quietly leave the sanctuary, or to come and have your feet washed. We'll have three chairs here with Pastor Nate, Gary, and myself. And then we have a fourth chair here for those of you who feel led and called to wash one another's feet. And so I'll start here, whoever would like to come forward, and I'll wash the foot of feet of an individual who'd like to come here. And then this person has the opportunity to wash the next person's and then it goes in rotation like that. I think it will be self-explanatory once you come up, so we won't overthink it. All right, you're welcome to come forward as you feel led. (laughs) 